This is question one of the 2020 mechanics exam. So it is. Right, Tom flies a Boeing 737-800, which is an average size plane with a takeoff mass of, what is that? Seven and a half, no, that's 750 tons. Um, there are times where he flies horizontally in a straight line, um, and there are times when he has to take a circular path such that the plane is banked at an angle to the horizon. Um, diagrams below represent this. Draw the force of gravity and a lift force on the plane in two situations below. So you're going to need a ruler, um, and in this case, you want to try and like make sure this is to scale. Um, so I want to do for the first diagram, it's at level flights. I mean, horizontally straight line, constant velocity. Even if it's going up and down, it's still constant velocity. So the gravitational force. I don't know. Make it one and a half centimeters. Call that F G, and then that means we need to. I'll just put a cross here. We need to go up by one and a half. So the lift force, we'll call this F L, is equal to the gravitational force, and we should really have a key. So I don't know. I'll put the key. Uh, F L equals lift force. Lift force. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, there should be no G in there. Uh, F G. Uh, gravitational. Gravitational force, force, that'll do. Um, and then here, I'm gonna go same gravitational force, so down one and a half, F, G, um, and then, I don't know, we'll make it about two. So when it's going, like when it's banking, the normal, or the, what do you call it, lift force is obviously gonna be still in line with the wings of the plane, so it's gonna be up this direction. But the question is how big to make that force. And the reasoning behind it is the horizontal component of the, uh, not the horizontal, the vertical component of the lift force needs to equal the vertical component of gravity. So in other words, this dotted line here will be the vertical component of the lift force. So the lift force that can break into its horizontal and vertical components. Um, its horizontal component will be over here somewhere. I'll just dot, 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 dot. And then this lift force needs to stop where the dotted line is. And now, if L, this is perfectly to scale. So you'll notice that this vector is actually larger than the gravitational force, and it's because the horizontal component of lift provides the center pointing force, in other words, the centripetal force. Sweet. Um, compare the size of the uh, size of the force due to gravity and the lift force in the plane. On the plane when Tom flies it horizontally in a straight line and we flies a horizontal horizontal circle banked at an angle. Give reasons why they are similar or different in each situation. Numerical working is not necessary. I literally just explained it just then, so I'll just pause it and write it out. Right, so I said when flying in a straight line, there is no acceleration, thus the net force is zero. Um, I mean, it's sort of assumed. Horizontal straight line, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, that's net force is zero. So the lift force is equal to the gravitational force. I'm just shortening it. Or this is how you normally should write it. Um, F L minus F G. I mean, you could have it around the other way, but I mean, I like up to be positive on the Cartesian coordinate system. So F L is deemed positive. Um, minus F G equals zero. When flying in a circle, the plane is accelerating. Brackets changing direction. I mean, that's your uh, your twelve physics. Thus, F net doesn't equal zero. That equals with a dash to it means doesn't. The lift force must have a vertical component equal to F G. I mean, it's not going up and down, and have uh, and also have a horizontal component. I mean, I explained that before, um, which allows the plane to turn. Thus, when turning, F L be greater than F G. And I kind of label things. I call this F C, but really this should be. Um, if C is equal to horror of F L, it just means horizontal component of the lift force, and then F L uh, vertical component um, should be equal to, and that's equal to F G. Um, right, I hope that pretty much covers everything. Um, on one occasion, Tom flies a plane. What is it? Seven, uh, seven and a half. I'm sure that's 750 tons in a circular path with a speed of. 54 meters per second, banked at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the radius of the circle that the plane describes. Explain your working for the calculation of the radius of the circular. Hold on, wait. Explain your working for the calculation of the radius of the circular pass 
part describes a diagram may assist your explanation. I mean, that's annoying, isn't it? When you write, yeah, I'm not even gonna criticize it. I'm just annoyed that the question's on one side of the page and the answer's on the other. Right, so what I need to do, probably I should try and find the centripetal force. That'd be the easiest thing for me to do. Um, and then from there I can just work backwards and find the radius. Um, I already know the velocity. Yes, I know the velocity. I know the bank angle is gonna be 35 degrees, um, which means the angle, okay, I'll just draw it. Um, right, so, I'm gonna split this into two boxes. And I'm gonna have my plane, I don't know if I can draw this plane that well. Um, here's my plane. This is going to be FG. There we go. Um, this is going to be F. And I'll just make sure this is dot, 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 dot. And this is FL. FL. And then just a little side note. Um, I'll just, I'm going to have to dot, dot at this line, aren't I? this is theta so if this is theta this here is 90 degrees this angle here that's the co-interior of theta so theta is 35 crap what's that this would be 65 and then angles on a straight line add to 180 so 65 plus 90 plus this angle here again will be theta this is FC. I already know FG because that's just the gravitational force. Um, so what I should really do is I'm going to use tan to find the center pointing force. Um, and I'll just write an equation. So I write tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is equal to, what's the opposite? FC over FG. Um, and then... Do I need to, how do I explain? Explain your working for the calculation of the radius. A diagram may assist your explanation. Right, maybe I'll put um, dot, dot, dot. It should be like a QED. Um, here, trying to find, um, trying to find um, if C in relation, in relation, relation to if G and theta. There we go. Right, so we'll rearrange this for if C. So we're going to have um, M, G, 10, theta is equal to mv squared over r. Um, and we're gonna, re, we're gonna divide both sides by m, so we'll cancel both m's out. Um, and then we're gonna, we, can, we wanna find r. Um, so we'll move r up and move g tan theta under. So we're gonna have r is equal to v squared over g tan theta. And that is gonna be equal to What's V? How fast is it going? 54 meters per second. 54 squared over 9.81. That should be 54.0, because it's 3 SF, uh, times 10 of 35. 35 degrees, and that is gonna give me 424.5 one. Three, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. So that is, and then we're down here. So that's uh, meters because the radius. So down here we have r is equal to Swedish rounding. We round it up four to five meters. I better check the answers. <laughs> I got it right. How do I? I'm just looking at the answers now. I have, they did it weirdly. Did I? Okay, I didn't do it the same as the answers. I apologize for that, but I did it the easy way, so whatever. Um, cool. 
Tom then flies his plane at a height of 1.28. So this here is the way how you do it normally. Um, even in, what textbook is it in? Um, Boasman? I think it's Boasman. Boasman, they have, um, what formula do they have? They have V equals RG tan theta square root. And most kids memorize that actually. That's a formula you can memorize. Um, yeah, the Bo uh, uh, Rob Boseman textbook. Um, I mean, it's arguably the better one out of the iPad and the other ones that are there. I mean, I've, I've used all of them. They're all much of a muchness, really, but I'd say it's probably slightly better because it's got this formula in it and it has good color as well. Um, anyway, just digress. Um, how high is he? What's this? 1, 2, 8 times 10 to the 4. What's that, like 12,800 meters? Uh, 1.28 uh, either 4. Yeah, 12,800. Um, calculate gravitational strength, field strength at the height Tom flies the plane. Um, cool. So this is just going to be... Uh, grab it this. Force, isn't it? Nah, they want gravitational field strength. That's meters per second per second. So uh, you, in your formula sheet, you've got a constant big M, little m over R squared because it's a diminishing returns. Um, formula and that is equal to mg because um, you just want to find the gravitational field strength which is g so we'll cancel out little m and that'll give us g um, cool so we are just going to plug and jug big g is what is big g have i got it in this i mean i haven't memorized it have i no i'm pretty sure it's what's gravitation six point six point six seven uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 11 in it. Yep. And it's got some weird units to make it consistent. Um, times, how heavy is it? Uh, oh, this is the mass of the Earth. 5.98, 5 5.98, 10 to the 24, divided by, this is where kids stuff up, 6.37, that's to the surface, times 10 to the 6, plus to the height of the plane, 1.28 times 10 to the 4. This is a common trick I use when I'm writing these equations to stuff kids up. Right, that's pretty much it. I'll just plug and chug. Right, and when I did this equation, I just realized I forgot the squared there because I got a massive number to begin with, and that was insane. So it's 9.796 meters per second, negative 2. And then you just write down here, G is equal to, round this up to 3 SF, uh, Ooh, nine point that should be eight oh uh I'll make it seven nine um meters per second negative two. Cool.